Bye. Okay, game change detected. Whatever. Time for the job market. Quick job. Holy moly. Anyone else notice how suddenly we're making $15,000? Oh, because the job is twice as long. Holy crap. Well then. I gotta get my trucker hat going, rat. Rat proper here. Okay. We ready for this? Are we ready for this? On the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Something, 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 friends. And I can't wait to get back on the road again. That was horrible. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if you've noticed, but um, I've been playing Fallout 3, like, religiously lately. I mean, honestly, you wouldn't notice because... I've only put up a few videos on YouTube. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh, thank god. Oh man, talk about fucking killer. Killing it right there. Um, so I've been playing a lot of Fallout 3. Uh, I would say I'm probably at the 20 hour mark by this point and made quite a lot of progress finally there's a point where I wasn't making any progress early on in the game and I was just getting really fucking dis discouraged and whatnot feeling like I'm not going to play it anymore but I finally started making progress and you know we're making headway and I'm doing pretty good so so yeah that should be so pathetic. Got some juice here. Mango. Mango. And I've had some hilarious moments with Fallout 3, alright? Like shit that you guys are going to love when I finally get around to it. Um, for one thing, one of the big goals early on in the game is to find your dad. I found my dad, played by Liam Neeson, and after I found him, we immediately had to trek back. He said he was, that we had to go back to uh, a place called Rivet City. And so I'm thinking, what, do we fast travel there, or do we go there together on foot, or what? And dad just starts running. He just starts running. He just starts going to Root City on foot in a Vault 101 jumpsuit which has like no protection for him. And he has no weapons on him and he won't let me give him any weapons. So he's literally just wandering the wastes, punching the shit out of giant rad scorpions, robots, raiders, super mutants, whatever the hell comes between him and his fucking goal. He just says this is the way it has to be, I guess. And goes for it. My dad was a badass. So, yeah. Because I'm thinking, I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to do here. I'm just gonna go ahead and follow him. I followed him all the way back to Rivet City, which was across the fucking map. And it took at least, like, an over an in-game in -game day, over a day in-game, to actually get to back to where he needed to be. So, I said, fuck it, we're going to join dear old dad on this trip through the wastelands and get some experience along the way, killing whatever the heck tries to kill him. Which at first sounded like a great idea because not only do you ex get experience, but you can also start, you can pick up a lot of like weapons and stuff like that that you can sell later when you find somebody to trade with. So of course, I am 
collecting all these like rad scorpion glands and whatnot and I'm taking them with me and I'm like I'm gonna sell these when I get a chance to I'm not giving them up I'm I want to keep them I want them so that I can make money off of them so instead of actually um, dropping those when I run out of space in my inventory I elect to start drinking in-game booze. So, like, you, you can pick up, like, whiskey and scotch and vodka and beer. And, uh, or also they have these things called Mentats and Psycho and, uh, I don't even know. They're, they have a lot of weird, uh, buff out. Oh, yeah. A lot of... Uh, drugs in the game that you can get addicted to as well and um, yeah I just start taking those instead of dropping anything because I'm like I don't want to drop anything I'm just I have so many of these whiskeys I might as well just drink one of these so I elected to start calling it the wasted wasteland tour with my dad and uh, yeah it went quite well and it was quite interesting because you know, early on, I was taking on, taking so many of these things that I literally became addicted to them. And then when I started running out of them or not wanting to use them so much or not needing to use them so much, um, I, my, because I was addicted, I was, I started to suffer from like uh, withdrawal and whatnot. And that makes it harder to see and whatnot. So, like, man, it was a real wasted wasteland tour. And there was at least one point in that tour where we got blown up. And when I say we got blown up, I mean one of those nuclear cars exploded. And my body visibly went flying in the air for, and it didn't land for at least 30 seconds. That is what I'm talking about. It was fucking insane. There were several hilariously ridiculous moments during that Wasted Wasteland tour, and that is a video that I cannot wait to put up. I'm going to wait, obviously, but just know that sometime probably in October or November or whatever it's just a bad idea sometime in October November or whenever um, I'm going to be putting that video up and that video is hilarious there was another moment in the game where I went to an area I had previously already been to it was an area with like these people who want, who are like wannabe vampires. They're Edward Collins. Alright? And, um, well, the area that I went to wasn't really scary, but it was a, uh, it was in a abandoned, uh, what, are, what do you call it? A, an abandoned tunnel, essentially. And, one of the areas I went to in this abandoned tunnel in order to get where I needed to go, I'm walking around down there. I'm walking around in the tunnel. And I note that uh, in one of these areas there is a floating doll head. So the head of a doll is just floating in midair, not doing anything, shouldn't be there, obviously shouldn't be able to like float in midair, and there's something else like a suitcase or something else that's like floating right next to it, and I get up real close to this thing so I can get a good look at it, and it looks like it's a charred, burnt to a crisp head of a doll, a female doll. But not only that, this charred to a crisp head of a female doll has, like, glowing red eyes. And it is the creepiest thing I have ever seen in a video game, bar none, 
at all. And then, uh, just as just as I'm pointing out how creepy that is, the doll head just goes flying off into the distance. I got the hell out of there as quickly as I possibly could. That was like, what the fuckery is going on here? <laughs> And again, that's another one I can't wait to show you guys. I'm having some pretty amazing experiences playing Fallout 3, and I can't wait to show you guys all of them. Uh, early on, I will admit, early on, I had a lot of troubles, a lot of difficulty getting used to the game, so I made a lot of mistakes, and it was kind of boring early on, I think. But as the game get, goes on and gets better, it gets less boring. So I think what I'm going to do probably is try to put more content into each of those videos. So like maybe an hour per video instead of just 30 minutes, which is what they currently are. So that I can get to those better uh, content videos sooner. Well, this is new. I've actually never seen this. I've played this game for like 50 hours and I've never seen a roadblock like that before. It's interesting. At least it kept me from crashing. You know that's true. Master! Master! Where's the dreams that I've been after, Master? Oh, crap. What was I just saying? So what have I not, what have I been up to this week? Uh, let's see. Oh, over the weekend I watched As Good As It Gets. Hadn't seen it for years. Had not seen that movie for years. And um, I got it for free as like a promotion on Target's, you know, voodoo thing. Target had some kind of a voodoo thing where if you signed up for their service, they'd give you t like 10 or 20 movies or something like that for free. So I said, fuck it, yeah, sure, I'll 20 free voodoo movies. Fuck yeah, I'm going to do that. And one of the free voodoo movies that I got was As Good As It Gets with Jack Nicholson and Helen Hunt. That movie is so fucking good. I had completely forgotten how good that movie was. Because I didn't get it when I was younger. That movie made no sense to me when I was younger. Because, you know, I didn't understand anything when I was younger. Especially considering it's like more of an adult uh, dramedy. Yeah, that's the right term, dramedy. Adult-oriented dramedy, which at the time when I was younger I didn't really like too much of. I liked some of them, but I, the ones I liked were more family-oriented because those ones, you know, were aimed more at a family. And so it was easier for me to understand what's going on. So, like, for instance, I really like A Million to One. I have it on DVD. And I like it because it's... Not only because it's got like it deals with like social issues, but because it's aimed at families. So it's it's not necessarily too difficult to understand if you have a family and if you are from a family. And it features kids, so it's not very hard to understand that. So I'm not when I first watched As Good As It Gets when I was younger, I didn't understand a goddamn thing about it. I didn't know what was going on, why anything was funny or would be funny in it. And I really didn't pay much attention to it. So, you know, that's one that I didn't really like at first. But, you know, I figured I would give it a chance when I got it for free on Voodoo. And finally got around to giving it a second chance. And I have to say, I am so glad that I gave it a second chance. Because that is now one of my favorite movies. Uh, it's crazy how that can happen, but yes that is one of my favorite movies now because I as you may know I have an anxiety disorder with an anxiety disorder 
you know, certain things, you have certain experiences that are very similar to other mental disorders. So, Jack Nicholson's character in As Good As It Gets has obsessive compulsive disorder. He has that that he admits to, but I'm pretty sure he also has some other issues that he doesn't admit to. I should probably have gotten some gas there, but fuck it. Anyway. He has that issue that he admits to, and he has other issues that he won't admit to. But, uh, there are certain things that his character does that I relate to entirely. Now, at first glance, and I recall everybody thinking this, at first glance, you're supposed to think, wow, Jack Nicholson is playing a complete and total asshole. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? And he's spo you're supposed to think of him as a bad person that, like, learns a lesson or something. In reality, he's not actually that bad of a person. And I wouldn't even say that there's any evidence in the movie to support the concept that he learns a lesson. If anything, everyone around him in his life learns a lesson. Not him. Because he remains the same crotchety old guy who, you know, what they don't tell you is that he's using the aggression method in order to uh, be able to have a conversation and be able to converse and have a social interaction with people and things and animals and what have you. He takes that approach because it's the only one he's comfortable with. That doesn't make it healthy, mind you. But, like, that's the only one he knows how to use. It's the only one that he's comfortable using, probably because, like, it's the only one he learned, ever learned how to use. You know what I mean? So, like, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, a lot of people take, who have disorders take different approaches to social situations. They take different approaches to handling situations that they feel very anxious about. So, um, some people react with anger, some people react with fear, some people react with humor, some people react with this, some people react with that. There are so many, some people react with depression. There are so many different ways that people react to these things. And it was clear to me that the character, the way that it was written in this movie, of uh, Jack Nicholson's character, um, was used to reacting in a sarcastic, angry, fuck the world kind of manner. And not only that, but I felt like he might also have some, like, uh, some issues with uh, Tourette's Syndrome, maybe? I kind of felt like maybe there was some Tourette's Syndrome in there, or maybe even some uh, Asperger's, because there, there's a time, there's a point in the movie where he says that it's exhausting for him to talk like this, and he says that when he's trying to talk like a normal human being. He still doesn't sound like a normal human being, but you can see visibly and hear, visibly, hear audibly that he is trying sound what uh, uh, like what he thinks normal people sound like and that's something that uh, people with Asperger's syndrome deal with that's something that people with Tourette's syndrome sometimes deal with and he very much sounds like a character that has one or both of those issues I'm close to that oh Jesus so Long story short, after I take this sip. Long story short, Jack Nicholson has issues, but that doesn't make him a bad person. Um, and in reality, actions speak louder than words, and all the actions that he does, he takes care of his neighbor's dog while his neighbor is in the hospital. He, um, he gives his, uh, editor or whatever. No, not his editor, his agent. He gives his agent shit and, like, pretty much demands her to get this woman he barely knows on his, uh, 
I need gas. I need gas. I need gas. I don't see gas anywhere around here. Well, I guess we'll see where this goes. Someone's gonna run directly into me, I know it. Waiting for it, waiting for it. Oh, they didn't run into me, okay. All right, back to as good as it gets. <laughs> so, um, he takes care of his neighbor's dog while his neighbor's in the hospital very nice thing, very neighborly thing to do, despite the fact that everyone thinks he's the worst neighbor in the world. Um, he, and yes, he's kind of forced into it, but you can tell that he would have done it, you know, if he felt comfortable with it, but he didn't feel comfortable with it because he's got a fucking disorder. He's got obsessive compulsive disorder, and a dog kind of completely and totally fucks with that. In fact, anybody entering your life completely and totally fucks with that. So, um, and a dog being erratic and, you know, not behaving like a human being and not behaving the way that he, uh, that his brain thinks a human being should behave, um, is going to completely upset that natural order. So, what he finds is although he's afraid of that concept, he loves the dog. And although he didn't want to have this dog forced on him at first, he actually really was happy to have the dog in his life because he's got a companion in his life who actually cares about him, that he can care about them and take care of them and whatnot. And he finds out that this is one small thing in his life that he can do that is like a step towards normalcy, essentially. And... It's. It, it, I got the sense that it was probably the first time in his life. Or at least you get the sense that it was one of the few times in his life that he's ever felt anything close to normalcy. So, um, he does that. That's a good thing. He calls up his uh, agent, or, you know, he goes to see his agent. And then he pretty much demands that she puts this uh, waitress that he likes... And he likes the waitress not just because he likes her, but be, please, she's played by Helen Hunt, of course. Not just because, oh, he likes her on like a, a romantic level, but because of the whole obsessive compulsive thing where he's obsessive about having the same person deliver his food every single time. That kind of thing, you know what I mean? So. When he finds out that she isn't coming to the restaurant and all this, he actually, uh, he makes his agent send his personal doctor to her house to look at the kid and to have tests run and all this. So he essentially pays for the health care for her child so that she won't have to worry about that and stay home and take care of her sick child so that she can get back to work. Selfish it may be. And yeah, it's it, it's all a part of this whole obsessive compulsive disorder thing and maybe even some fucking uh, some Asperger's to, to in, thrown in there for good measure, you know what I mean? But um, as selfish as that may be for him to do that for those reasons only, it's not like... I get the sense that it's not like he thinks... It's not like he's doing it because... Uh, because he's genuinely selfish, it's doing it. He's doing it because he is compulsed. He feels compulsed to do that. He feels compulsed to make sure that this person is providing him with the food in his life. And he doesn't want anybody else to do it yada 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 so it's not necessarily entirely selfish 
And even if it is, even if you do consider it selfish, you have to understand that, you know, it's only selfish because he doesn't really understand the world the same way that normal people do. He doesn't really interact with the world the same way that normal people do. And there's really nothing he can fucking do about that. As he says in the scene that is the titular scene of the movie, where he says... He, he, tur he walks out of his uh, therapist's office, he turns to everybody in the office, and he says, what if this is as good as it gets? He's talking about, what if this, the moment, the, the situation that he's in right then, where he has very little control over anything that he does or says, he has multiple issues that he's having to deal with at the same time, and... They're all making it a struggle for him to fucking survive. Ah, good. Right as I'm running out of fuel. Uh, what if that's as good as it gets? You know, like... You get the sense that he kind of understands that, like, he's got issues and that he's not normal and that the way he behaves is not normal and acceptable, but that he can't really do anything about it either. Is this the first time? This is the first time we're getting gas in the game, you guys. Throwing that out there. So, anyways, as I continue analyzing as good as it gets here... Gas in the world. So, anyways, Jack Nicholson's character, as I'm trying to describe here, not necessarily a bad guy. He just doesn't know any better and he can't fucking control his behaviors. And that's how it is when you have a mental disorder like that. Either, even if you do know better, you can't control those behaviors, or your control over those behaviors is very limited. That's something people don't understand, is that, you know, sometimes when you have a mental disorder, you understand that the way that you're behaving or acting or rationalizing or fucking whatever, the way that you are is not socially acceptable. You understand that, and you despise the fact that you cannot stop yourself from reacting the way that you do. Which is shown expertly in Jack Nicholson's character when after he has to give the dog back when, the, when his neighbor comes back from the hospital, he's sitting and playing the piano and crying because the, he lost the dog to, because he had to give it back to his neighbor. He's crying and he's laughing at the same time. He's laughing and he says, all over a stupid dog. He's laughing because he understands that it is fucking ridiculous to be upset over the loss of a dog that wasn't even his to begin with. He understands implicitly that his behavior is not acceptable. That the way that he reacts and behaves in the world is not socially acceptable and he doesn't want to behave that way but he can't control himself because he has obsessive compulsive disorder and he is obsessively compulsed with behaving the way he does so or you know to a certain extent I mean that's that that's generalizing it quite a bit but that's kind of the gist of it right so, the funny thing about that is that all of the other characters in his life also have their own issues. Um, his neighbor, who ends up in the hospital, self-esteem issues, self-worth issues, doesn't uh, have very good um, self-esteem, you know? And he doesn't think that it's ever going to get better, and he doesn't think that he can take responsibility for himself. And he learns, eventually, that he has to take responsibility for himself. And he does that. He grows. He advances as a character. 
uh, Helen Hunt's character is very demanding. I mean, you wouldn't think about it at first, but like she says during at one point in the movie, she says, um, why can't I have a normal boyfriend? And her mom says, everybody wants that, honey. It doesn't exist. That's like one of the best lines in the film, period. Because it's so fucking true. Whether you're talking about boyfriends or girlfriends or wives or husbands. Why can't I have a normal this? Why can't I have a normal that? Everybody wants that. It doesn't exist. Is the truest statement... One of the truest statements I've ever heard in the film. Sorry, I had to scratch my chest and I was like... You know, throwing me off my balance. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, um... Yeah. And she behaves that way throughout the film. She doesn't give Jack Nicholson's character a chance to explain himself. She gets overly upset every time he says or does anything that to her is socially unacceptable. And, I mean, it's a shame. It really is a shame because, like, she has got some serious emotional issues. If she can't be bothered to give somebody a chance and to understand that maybe people don't necessarily mean to be negative or mean to act the way that they are acting. You know what I mean? So, um, there we go. I was like, where did that go? <laughs> so, over time, over the course of the film she learns to be more accepting she learns to be more patient with people and as she becomes more patient with people she becomes more patient with uh, Jack Nicholson's character and she kind of falls in love with him because it's of course a romantic comedy uh, and so she grows and learns something as a character but the only one who really doesn't like learn anything he changes but he doesn't learn anything is Jack Nicholson's character because he already he wasn't necessarily a bad guy you know he just has issues that he can't control he tries to control them and in one of the biggest lines in the movies he says he says uh, you make me want to try to be a better man or no he says you make me want to be a better man I think might say try I don't know but um, but yeah, I mean, that's an important moment in the film because it shows that he's changed because he's at least trying to do something about the way that he behaves, even though he has very little control over that. And um, I don't know, I really like that because at the end of the movie, the very end of the movie, you see them walking down the sidewalk and you see one of them on one side of the sidewalk and I just passed the uh So the sidewalk, they're on the sidewalk, the sidewalk has like one side with cracks in it and one side with like a bunch of like hexagonal patterns that I, I think. One's like more normal and one's more, you know, distorted. And awkwardly I think that Helen Hunt's character is actually the one walking on the one that's full of cracks and all distorted, right? And he's the one that's more on like a, a, a set pattern, right? And so. Interesting enough, one of them is, they're both walking together, but one is walking on one side, and the other is walking on the other side, and then they both walk into a shop, and when he opens the door, for just a split moment, you can see him put his foot on the crack between both sides, which is a vis visual cue that he has actually changed during the movie, because that's something that he couldn't do before, because of his obsessive compulsiveness he didn't want to step on any cracks but he can do that now because he's been trying to be a better man 
because he likes Helen Hunt's character. Because he's been trying to be better and to do better and to improve his situation in life, even though he has very little control over it. So, absolutely love that movie because I relate to it so much as somebody who has a, a mental disorder because it is like the perfect example of what that is really like. So yeah, if you haven't seen that, I highly recommend that you go and watch As Good As It Gets because when it comes to representing um, mental disorders on in film, it truly is as good as it gets. I know that was corny as fuck. But hey, it's also true. Anyways, that'll do it for today. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Poosh!